she just goes like that, and she's got a plastic bag. So that's clean hairs, and that is we have a good colour scheme. But she sat up. Susan, we gave her this, we got her on. And uh, oh, so we, she, she sat up and she put some tea out. Where did she get the material? Oh, no, it's a tea towel. Tea towel. Oh, she went for tea towel. Tea towel so. win. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. 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 Kids are sit and talk to kids. Here we are. We're down at the next level down. You can hear Gaylene's music. She's sitting underneath a sundress here in a lounger or loafer with little Rachel enjoying her music. Oh, she's feeling right. Where's Catherine missing out on all this? Now hold one out please. Now these, these here, Lisa made these about two hours before we left. So would you try one Kat? They're her rum ball she made to bring back to New Zealand. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Aren't they lovely? She made them all herself. Just right. So there we are. Did you get one too, did you, Wendy? Right, so there we are. It's beautiful. It is lovely. Monday the 13th of May and uh, it's a cold morning outside isn't it Jeremy? Yeah. Is it cold outside? You're not ready to play outside yet are you? Well, what are you busy doing there darling? How are you going to make a house? Who's the house for love? Yeah. Oh him, oh, I see yeah. What's him? 1951 when the war deciders demanded the threepence an hour other unions had received from the arbitration court. The war deciders refused to work overtime in protest. The employers said the wharves couldn't be cleared without the overtime and the employers locked the gates to the wharves. It was the chance the newly elected Holland government was looking for, a major opportunity to bring the water ciders union to heel. But adding complication to it all was the lack of support the water ciders received from the Federation of Labour, led by the rival union leader, Fintan Patrick Walsh, who sided essentially with the government. The water ciders battled more or less alone for 151 days. Their union was deregistered and many of their leaders were never allowed on the wharves again. Today, some of them looked back. In 51 I was a man, I work on the wharves. In 51 a union man, I work for the cause. A freedom for the working man to fight for better pay. A freedom for the likes of me to work for a decent wage. It's a long time. And a lot of those who fought the good fight are no longer with us. And it's a wonderful thought. But after those years, 40 years, we should meet and pay a just tribute to them. That's Jock Barnes, leader of the Wharfies in 1951, addressing old comrades today, those who had fought that long, bitter dispute with a new national government determined to break the Wharfies once and for all. Our citizens must be protected from violence and intimidation. Law and order must be preserved. Cabinet, therefore, has decided to establish a civil emergency organization. 
Two survivors of the dispute forever blacklisted from the wards are prominent union men Frank Barnard and Bill Anderson. The Holland government in 1941 fought with a full arsenal. They claimed to ban on anyone reporting the union point of view, radio and newspapers. We've got very little chance of winning the public unless you can get your story out to the public. If you're not allowed to print the other side of it, unless you do it surreptitiously and illegal like we did, and what we call the bunny rabbit press, by the way, well, if you weren't allowed to do that, your chance of winning the mass wasn't very good. We probably underestimated the repression that be used against us. So that printers who printed your pamphlets and so forth, people who distributed your pamphlets, were liable to be arrested, were liable to be... My word. And what about food? I mean, it was, a, it was illegal, wasn't it, to, to provide food to the strikers or their families? Very illegal. Uh, uh, where my home is in Vermont Street in Ponsonby today, uh, that was the butcher shop and the depot for the distribution full of meat to the, to the depots. We'd have to go out to Oratea, Kumia, the Dalmatians, they were donating the meat, the fruit, the potatoes and all that. They could have lost their farms or anything by doing all this, but they did it. And they even helped us to kill it and dress it out. It was great support in that area, because they have working class type of people that we were dealing with, understand, understood the struggle. Actually, for that number of people to exist for five months is quite a remarkable achievement. We had our own uh, boot repairers, shoe repairers, our own barbers, all kinds of tradespeople turned to and worked for us. We had no income. We got no money in 51, by the way. We got uh, food and clothes as required, but no money. A few gardens might have got raided here and there, but <laughs> somebody had to survive them days. One of the difficulties you had conducting the dispute was that the Labour movement never stood solidly behind you throughout the rest of the country. What were some of those internal divisions and what were they about? Well, our biggest trouble there, and Bill can elaborate further, is that it was a TUC and the Federation of Labour. And you people were TUC? Yeah, we were TUC. Uh, it was a power, one of those things between them and us type of thing. And uh, the government and Fintan Patrick Walsh himself decided that he was going to get the other people in it well and truly on his side to help smash it. And the, this uh, TUC, and that's what happened with the, with the aid of the government. There's always a big difficulty in the union movement to get general union support around one or two unions making a claim. Workers always fight better when they're part of the claim. There's a little pot of gold at the end of the track, they fight better. If I've got to lose my job to support Paul Holmes, it's a more difficult decision to make. And that's one reason. The other reason was, as Frank said, the leadership of the Federation of Labour was completely on the side of the government and the shipowners. No doubt about that. Fintan Patrick Walsh was keener to see the end of your... Smash it at all costs. Mm. Did he shaft you? Well, I'm true in shaft. I've been shafted many times, but not that hard. When did you know the, the strike or the lockout, whichever you call it, was doomed? Was well, there a point? When they started, when we were marching up Queen Street with a peaceful demonstration to advertise that there was a meeting in the domain on the Sunday, and they just come in and on spread and on us with the batons. We knew then how hard the confrontation was and how probably how short-lived it would be from that point on, because it was from that point on it started to disintegrate. You've got to be amongst that crowd to hear those bat batons sitting home on hollow heads or otherwise, not a very nice sound. The people that formed the union after you lot were banned towards the end of 51, were they scabs? You know another word, I don't. Traitors or scabs, what are you really like? That's what they were. And what's the state of the unions today? Well, they're not dying. They'll live to fight another day, I can assure you. And how long the younger generation are going to take this crap that's being just stuck to them right now, uh, I would have more confidence in the younger generation than to let them get away with this. The fight back is just starting. 151 days a lockout The kids and mum get a knockout Union fund pay then run out When will men have liberty To stand together in unity A thousand vote but the company Blocks out Watch out they'll get the cops out
Well, and next we go to Australia. The Rep You're not going to be in it, aren't you, darling? Aren't we Wendy and Kevin's place? And Gemma's just been through to see who? <laughs> Have you and his house Nana today? She's good. She's got what, darling? Oh, she hasn't got any glasses. Where are her glasses, darling? Oh, who broke her glasses? Who broke her glasses? Yes? No? Oh, dear. No glasses, babe. Oh, Really? Who's this? What's that for there? Oh, they're Wembley. Look at the worm. Look at the worm down there. Kevin got off the phone on Friday night and said, Oh no, not proper. Oh no. Is he coming up? Oh no, he's up. He's he's a board again Christian. <laughs> we got it. We got it all day yesterday. That's what made Kevin look so different today. Well, he doesn't take care again, Kevin couldn't wait to see the back. In fact, Kevin sat there after two hours and said, Come on, let's go for a walk. I need some fish. <laughs> but he's a good monkey, you'll Oh, well. He's been through, you know what, Michael. I mean, what Michael hasn't done in his life isn't worth trying. I've well, right. <laughs> written a book about it, haven't I? <laughs> Yeah, well, he's, oh, and he's got and they're ridiculous. You know what they're like when they first get converted. I mean, <laughs> full on preaching, <laughs> wasn't it? Mm. Oh dear, and he's not shifting up by any chance. Oh no, 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 no. no. Oh, well, you're safe then. Oh, no. But I remember Teresa was like that when she was first um, converted
Can you get it there? 